So, you've just bought Ghost of Tsushima or The Last of Us Part 2 and you're excited to immerse yourself in the world-class storytelling you've heard so much about. After a few hours of play, you decide to pause the game and take a break, and you see the dubious photo mode option. You open it to try it out, and finally find the right filters and exposure to take your first photo. And then you take another, and another, and another. Despite your best efforts, you keep stopping to take photos of the gorgeous landscapes and character models. Congratulations! You've just fallen victim to the recent wave of photo mode features in AAA blockbusters. But how can you make sure you're taking the best possible photos to impress your friends? First off, I want to make it plain that I'm not the most qualified person to be talking to you about this. I've studied photography and have spent a considerable amount of time taking photos in and out of games, but there are countless more talented video game photographers out there, a few of which will be linked in the description. These are great examples of what can be achieved with enough time and dedication, but for now, let's start with the basics. Most new titles releasing these days include a photo mode at launch or shortly after. It's a no-brainer for developers because it's a fairly simple feature which provides a ton of free marketing over social media. But unfortunately, many titles lack a lot of the necessary tools. Take Marvel's Avengers, for instance. The photo mode in Crystal Dynamics latest is lacking so many features it would be quicker to list off the ones it does have. Basic settings such as different framing options are absent, and the camera feels as unwieldy as a mechanical bull. On the other end of the spectrum is Ghost of Tsushima, which takes things a little more seriously. Sucker Punch's Samurai Epic includes everything you need, from colour grading to time of day and wind direction, while even going above and beyond to advance the potential uses for photo mode with animated environments. This is all to say that the features a photo mode provides matter exponentially. You'll still be able to take good photos in Marvel's Avengers, but in Ghost of Tsushima the possibilities are endless. The first and most important thing that you need to keep in mind is that lighting is everything. You can frame an incredible shot and it can still be absolutely ruined by poor lighting conditions. If the source of light is directly behind, you'll generally end up with your subject lacking detail, contributing to an off-putting photo. Equally, if the source of light is too harsh or directly towards the middle of your subject's face, you'll still lose a lot of detail as your subject won't be casting shadows on itself, making the lighting too flat. Setting up good lighting can be far easier if the game has a time of day slider, allowing you to alter the position of the sun and thus the source of light. This is most common in open world games, since linear games most often have their light sources built into the level design. In Ghost of Tsushima or Horizon Zero Dawn, you can pause at any time and move the sun to behind the camera. But in The Last of Us Part 2, you'll need to position your character according to the level's light source. For portrait shots, you'll generally want to find some soft lighting, maybe some sunbeams coming through a window, and position your character so that the light is hitting their face at an angle. This better highlights detail and makes the shot more visually appealing. One of the few exceptions to this is if you're trying to achieve a silhouette, which can be a tough effect to achieve in video games without direct control over the exposure and lighting. Lighting is, as I say, the most important aspect of photography, both real and virtual. So once you've mastered the art of good lighting, you're already halfway there. But there are a couple more things to learn. Good composition is next, and is generally a lot easier than you might think. I see a lot of people taking shots with their subjects directly in the middle of frame or off to one side. And while this isn't always a bad thing, there are a few rules you'll want to follow. The first of which is the rule of thirds. You may have heard of this already, and it's a very simple concept. You know that grid you get on your phone camera with two vertical lines and two horizontal ones? Those are your guidelines for the rule of thirds. It's called that because the lines divide the frame into thirds in both directions, and you'll always want to make sure your subject is placed along one of those dividing lines, usually to the left or right. This makes the photo more visually appealing because it helps draw the viewer's eye towards the subject, and will make your shots look exponentially better. Then there's leading lines. One of my personal favourite ways to make a photo more interesting is by using leading lines. These can be anything from a road to the barrel of a gun. Anything that leads the viewer's eye from one point of the frame to the main subject of the photo. This technique isn't as commonly used as the rule of thirds, but it's equally as powerful. But rules are made to be broken, and as I said a minute ago, these are only guidelines. Photography is a form of art, and art is about experimentation. One method in which you can explore your photography skills is moving your camera around a wee bit to see if you can find some more unique framing than the generic photo of a character left of frame with a gorgeous landscape in the background. Games often walk you right into beautiful environments, so everyone ends up taking the same shots. 
Try exploring some more angles on the vertical axis to find more ways of making your shot interesting. You'll often find things in the environment which can be used as natural framing. While you're at it, remember to use the depth of field slider. This is by far the easiest way to improve your shot by making it less busy and drawing the viewer to your subject. It helps to separate the character from the background. And another way of doing this is by using fog, smoke or other particle effects. Games like Ghost of Tsushima allow you to change the weather conditions to add fog to give your shot more depth, but you could always go a step further by using the game's tools to your advantage. The Last of Us Part 2 gives you access to smoke bombs, so try throwing some of them at the ground behind your character and using them to give your shot some drama. Another simpler way to add drama to a shot is by using the roll feature. This can be a fantastic feature for taking vertical shots, but when used well it can also make your photo far more exciting. General advice dictates that you'll want to keep the horizon straight along the horizontal axis, but when you want to make it obvious you're in an adrenaline fueled moment, there's no easier way than using the roll slider. If you're in a combat scenario and pause to capture that epic machete swing, try tilting the frame just a little bit to give the shot some motion. The great thing about video games is that they come pre-packaged with all these amazing colours. You could choose to enhance these colours with the built-in suite of colour grading effects and filters most photo modes offer, but be careful not to overdo it. Vibrancy filters can often leave a shot oversaturated, making the colours ugly as a result. Equally, making your shot black and white can be great for conveying a more restrained tone, but it could just as easily snuff all the life out of a colourful and lively environment. The most important thing to remember is to make each shot your own. Landscape shots are all well and good, but try to find something that no one else has thought of and I guarantee you'll have some photos that you're far more proud to share. I've been taking photos for years and I still enjoy the end result of coming up with a shot I'm proud of. Thanks to the barrage of photo mode options in games this generation, it's easier than ever to create art from the comfort of your living room. And in a lot of ways, I believe virtual photography has the potential to be even more beautiful than the real world. I hope these tips were helpful to you and I look forward to seeing your shots on social media. That was just one of many great reviews, essays and previews on our channel. If you like what you just saw, why not consider subscribing and dropping a like on this video.